Uh, yeah, DevArt, let's kick that. I could just use that. Uh, key size from Stink Digital, I'll gloss over that. So I want to talk today about DevArt, uh, which is a pro uh, project that we've been collaborating with Google Creative Lab and the Barbican and Google Developers Relations. And it really is a project that aims to kind of reframe code as a creative discipline and make art with code, which is kind of written there. Um, but it really kind of came off as a um, very straightforward business problem. And that, that problem is, how do you get more developers using more of our technologies? Um, and yeah, when I talk about Google technologies, I'm not talking about um, self-driving cars and Google Glass and all that really sexy stuff. I'm talking about the slightly less sexy stuff. So I'm talking about App Engine and Compute Engine and Dart. You know, it's not the kind of thing that sells itself. Um, and yet, it's the kind of, the kind of uh, platforms and toolkits that have an amazing amount of potential. And yet, really, you tend to use them to build kind of complex applications and databases. And the people that use them like really kind of rely very heavily on them to do that sort of project. Um, and yet, we figured, what if we could show them what else can be done with it? Um, and this is like all of the kind of stuff that you can do with code. I'll go into a bit more detail in a bit. Um, but it's, it's amazing. I mean, like, what developers are doing now is really pushing the boundaries of what code can be um, and what art can be. And so to, to start empowering developers as artists for like a really strong uh, starting point. And this, and this is something that we've noticed as well as we're doing a preliminary bit of research. Um, we had a couple of like, uh, kind of moments when even developers in, that we work with kind of refer to artists as real artists and developers as kind of like developer artists. And you know, digital is still seen as the support in an exhibition. When you go to watch, like, I don't know, go to any gallery and you see a Picasso and you have a little digital kiosk and you can find out more about Picasso, but it's not really the artwork unless it's like a very kind of specific digital art show. Um, and so reframing that felt like a really kind of fertile ground um, of people. And so it, it's amazing that that's still happening. Because like, so this is something that got submitted to DevArt that I really liked. And it's the ability to create these digital kind of um, ecosystems using real sand. So you get sand in a box, and you just put it in there. And it creates these mountains. And where there's depressions, it creates like, little fishes start swimming around. And it's. You know, it, like, digital isn't like just Facebook and text messages. You can you can use like real things and affect real um, bits of code. And you know, Yuri Suzuki is making uh, music machines that follow like lines and then play notes based on color. And it really starts to ask questions about how you create art and like what is art. And to me, that's kind of the crux of art. And there's a there's a John Maeder quote. I think he said that art asks questions and design answers them. And I think developers don't spend a lot of the time answering questions and making things rather than be empowered to ask questions. Um, and so as an artist, that's kind of how you spend most of your time doing. So we figured, let's start with a question. Um, I'm not sure if this is going next one. Yeah. So DevArt kicked off like this. If technology is your canvas, what would you create? Um, it's kind of a slightly open-ended question, um, and hopefully makes people see stuff in a different way. But I guess what you start creating is cool. So that's where, that's, that's where we start. We had a look for people that are out there making really cool stuff. Um, we, you know, we talked to, uh, I always get this name wrong, but I think it's Var, Var and Ma. Um, and you know, they're doing things like they're making like neural knitwear, making like scarves based out of your brain activity. And you, you got people like um, whoop, Zach Lieberman, and they're making, um, well, he's making like these, these goggles that with your eyes, you can create like graffiti on the side of buildings using lasers. And it's, again, it's really kind of mental like stuff. And to start off with that and go, look, this is what's possible to do with code. Uh, why don't you have a go? But really cool isn't enough, really. Um, because you can't just show someone like amazing stuff and go, off you go. Because it kind of doesn't work that way. You have to, you have to kind of educate them a bit. And so as we kind of went through DevArt, we started to, why is this going? Yeah. Um, we started looking at kind of tutorials and really explaining and, and educating people on how to achieve a certain thing. So if you're interested in um, a C++ type project that someone did, we'd kind of we'd serve up a, a bunch of content about that. And again, it's bringing the developers relationships, creating relationships around products. Uh, and so that's, that's how you get them from looking at something that's amazing to understanding how it's made. So 
another thing that popped up is, as we were talking about this, is we need to demystify the whole process because digital is still seen as this weird, say digital, like, like, like let me go a couple of slides back. Like this stuff is seen as this weird kind of black magic, right? Some, some guy like, I don't know, like one of these guys like sits, sits in there and comes up with a bunch of stuff and out comes an amazing visualization. And that's not really how it happens. It's a real creative process. I mean, this kind of explains you how to do it, but not the thinking. And so when we kind of started doing dev art, we're really kind of looking to hero process over product. Like lots of, lots of exhibitions do product. You walk into an art gallery and you see the finished thing and it's great and you might get a little bit of blurb. But to find out how it was made, I think that was, that was again, really interesting for us to, to explore. Um, so we kind of went to GitHub. Now at this point, I might risk being slightly <laughs> patronizing, but um, how many people know what GitHub is? All right, so it's worth explaining. So um, the, way <laughs> the way I kind of had to break it down um, was that it's basically like where developers primarily store data, like all their code. They just back it up to the cloud. At the same time, they can collaborate on other people's projects. So it's kind of like a playground. Like someone will do something like, that's amazing. I'm going to take that bit, and I'm going to like make it better this way, and then someone else will take that. Um, and so GitHub is where developers live. Um, but it's kind of decentralized. So you work on your computer, you do your stuff, and then you press save, and it commit, and it goes to the, goes to the cloud. Um, and so we, f we figured, what if this place, it's essentially just code and release notes and stuff like that, could be the modern creative's sketchbook? Um, because really, the sketchbook is um, the, the, the creative's kind of rationalization, justification. Like when you, someone just throws that in there and goes, that's art, you kind of want to see what's your thinking behind that. So we integrated the whole submission and creation process to GitHub. Um, so it was very simple. You basically, we created a template that had like, here's basically the fields you have to fill in, um, connect to GitHub, kind of replicate that, fork it or clone it. Um, and then every time you make a bit of code change and you commit, it kind of gets released live on the site. And so we don't really interrupt. There's not like a CMS that you have to go there and blog your entries and create a sketchbook. You ju you're just doing what you n actually do. It's a bit of a gamble, but um, we're kind of in the end. We ended up with like a site that looks like, I wonder if this will play. It should play. Um, you know, people like just started like really putting in their thinking and it was nuts. That's just like one project. And you could really see it from the crux of an idea. It's a tiny little sketch all the way to, all the, way to uh, the finished product. Um, so design, like creatives and developers and designers are really are using tools to document their work. And so in 24 hours, we had the fourth most popular repository on GitHub, the fourth most popular code base on GitHub. There's six million bits of code on GitHub, and that was the fourth. And I thought, wow, that's 24 hours. That's, that's going to break everything. Um, and we started to really get um, kind of giddy as we saw what's being put up there. And this isn't the exciting thing I guess you came to see, but this is the thing that made me really excited, was that people were sketching. People weren't just kind of sitting in front of the computer going, uh, like whatever strings and that. They were actually drawing these really complex things. And some people were photographing their sketchbooks. Like they really do use sketchbooks. People made art. So people made like actually really nice kind of concept art. Um, I kind of just wanted to nick as wallpaper. They made some people like used humor. They wrote ballads about their abused projectors, and it was it was really fun because you don't you don't equate kind of this this creativity with with developers. They just kind of like they're just really solid at making stuff and to empower them to say, look, you can you you can have fun with the process, and the process is part of being creative. You know, you can put motion tests, so you can uh, put code snippets. That's cool too. But it's show your um, process was kind of the prerequisite of DevArt. Um, sorry, I, l I wrote this on the plane, so I'm trying to figure out what comes next. Yes. So the uh, gallery then started to get filled up. And like as more and more people added projects, you, you'd have um, kind of slightly more finished projects. Projects have been added. You get some commission stuff. You get some tutorials on how things are done. You get, um, that's, I think that's Seichi, um, you know, showing other stuff that he done so you get a bit of everything. You get inspired by what's possible. You get shown how to do it. You, um, yeah, and you see other people's projects. Um, so really, what Devar ended up becoming uh, is a platform for other people to be creative, and that's something that really 
exciting me. Rather than just a thing where we make something really cool, we're opening it up for other people to make something that's really cool. Um, and the stuff that they made, like, I, they, really came, <laughs> they really came through. So Varvar Amar, actually, um, I'm trying to figure out where I point this, um, kind of made this really lovely thing. And it's, a, it's, it's, it's kind of a, um, an art piece that you, you say something, and it generates a swarm of butterflies. But the swarm of butterflies is customized depending on your sentiment. So the types of words that you're using the, uh, will affect like the the flutter of the butterfly or the color or the shape and stuff like that. So it's a, a beautiful use of just web speech API and some WebGL, uh, which you wouldn't necessarily use for that. Um, these guys, uh, that's a giant again, which I love. They used Google Maps to create this topography in which this giant explored um, this terrain. And it's based on like real terrain. And those watercolors made these mountains. Just a really lovely kind of bit of explorative story. Um, and this is probably the simplest one I saw, but quite mesmerizing. A simple Google scrape of image search um, ended up making an eternal sunset by looking at palettes from other sunsets. And you could just have this forever playing this amazing sunset. Um, kind of going through this a bit fast. Uh, yeah, so to kind of put our money where our mouth is, we wanted to put it in a physical place. We could create another kind of gallery that kind of shows really cool stuff about digital. but. If you're going to like enable someone to fulfill their creative potential, you want to reward them in the best possible way. Like, so we, we partner with the Barbican um, you know, as part of the Digital Revolutions exhibition to really take someone whose general perception of code was to make kind of very functional things and put them in a place that has exhibited anyone from like Andy Warhol to like the Rain Room. And you know, it's a really progressive place, and kind of there's a lot of gravitas behind that. And I think. That's probably what prompted the fourth most thing on GitHub. Um, and yes, and so the platform lives on. And to me, like I, again, I, I geek out about this because I wasn't in a place where this stuff was made available to me. But as part of DevArt, um, we kind of started the project to enable a younger generation, like the young creators, to come through and learn how to do it and, and kind of reach them while they still haven't got a perception of what code is and isn't. Um, and so maybe get them at a place where they can still identify code as a, as a tool, as a, a, a technology palette that you can apply to whatever your creativity is, the same way you might then combine it with a bit of sculpture, a bit of photography. And so what we've got is we've got, um, you know, Karsten Smith and Zach Lieberman and Favar Amar teaching these kids um, from like, actually, some of the London's poorest boroughs. I think Tower Hamlets doesn't have a single computer science related course of any kind. Um, and these kids are coming in, they get their little Chromebooks, and they like figure out how to make little butterflies fly and stuff like that. And it's it, it's amazing, like just just what happens when someone you know thought that actually it's FIFA, kind of sees code that way, and that they can create FIFA, maybe. Um, and so yeah, Dev Art Exhibition opens July the third. I think I have to plug that. But really, what what we aim to do with this is by reframing code as a creative discipline. Um, we inspire developers to be more creative. Um, and I think the learnings to me are kind of tend to be what I get more into. Um, so the first one is know your audience. It was, it was kind of a big ask to get people to kind of down tools from what they're doing or take time in a spare time to go and do something. So you kind of have to kind of reach them on their level. You've got to go where they're playing. You've got to talk their language and make it as easy and as seamless for them to, to do stuff. There's a lot of talk about disrupting behaviors, and it's a really kind of thing. But sometimes it's good to tap into existing behaviors and really make it as seamless as possible. I mean, at one point, this is going to be like one big GitHub page. But then again, when you're talking about audiences, you're also wanting to put this in a populist um, place. So you're talking to people that aren't necessarily interested in code. So you have to find a common ground for these things to be shared. So the sketchbook for us was that, is whoop, um, you know, don't just show people release notes and what the latest bit of code commit was. Talk to them in a language they can understand. Everyone keeps a sketchbook. Everyone understands how to write stuff. And I think creating a common ground that developers can show that they are creative in a way that other people can understand, I think that's, that was a really important kind of learning from this. Um, and then kind of grow your own. A lot, of, a lot of people kind of expect that this amazing work will just come to them. You just go, look, do stuff, and it will come to them, the finished product. But with something like this, there's a, there's a, a part of growing that community yourselves. And 
you, you start by doing the things I talked about earlier. You have to kind of inspire them. You have to say, look, it's possible. Don't just go and I wonder if it's possible. It definitely exists. We're not, we're not targeting uh, like a whole new set of artists that don't exist. Uh, we're targeting people that haven't done it before. And then so if they haven't done it before, you have to educate them on how to do it after you show them what's possible. Um, and furthermore, you have to enable them. You have to provide a platform that they can do it. Uh, don't just go, oh, look, this is possible. Here's how you do it. Like, create a really nice place for them to come and, you know, discuss it and make stuff. And I really didn't think I'd make it this far. So that's what, 16 minutes? That's me done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Sorry. I can go slower through slides. How do you kind of turn the table and and uh, give like a starting point for creatives or designers that aren't usually working in the digital world to kind of uh, attack something like this with or without some some developer background? Like, how do you inspire them or, or get them give them a starting point to learn more and, and engage more with dev art? <laughs> Boom. The honest, yeah. The honest, the honest answers. I, I wish I knew because that's something I would love to do. So as part of as part of that, I'd, l I'd love to be like, you know, you've got the young creators that get reached at that stage. You've got developers that can just twist what they do. But I think there's definitely room somewhere for a thing to come at the halfway line that goes, look, don't worry about repositories and stuff like that. Let's, let's, let's go through basics. And I think a lot of it's digital culture. A lot of the creators that come through Stink um, Digital have to be digitally cultured. So that doesn't mean like you have to know how to code. You just have to understand native digital behaviors now to use them and stuff and from that comes curiosity and from that comes hacking tumblr themes and doing like stuff like that and slowly but surely that begins but i think it kind of it to me it, it begins at home there needs to be a supportive uh, nurturing environment where you work people allowing you to do these r d things people allowing you to to fail privately and to kind of to question i think i, I did have a slide in here that was you know you have to trust your team a lot of this stuff we gambled on like the whole transparency thing and having developers show their work live that was a bit sketchy. That could have gone either way. Developers might have gone all the way to the end and someone gone, yeah, I'm just going to copy your work and submit that. But you know, you, you trust the developers that go, no, we'd love it to be open source and real time and stuff like that. And so for that then to, to kind of expect that trust back and that kind of um, support back for them to show you how to do it, I think it's the kind of thing you have to go and do yourself. And there's loads of, you know, you can go on Code Academy on all sorts of courses and, and do that kind of stuff. But that, that curiosity has to be there. And I mean, it'd be amazing if something like this in a couple of years, because this is touring around the world and it's going to be different submissions and stuff. But as it continues to grow for people that don't necessarily um, code to see uh, Google Tools as a very easy gateway to do stuff. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's one that I'll be sending an email about. Uh, I don't have the answer to it. Any other questions? Easy. Okay, thanks, thanks very much for Guy for doing DevArt. Cool. Thank you.